Here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two of properties of stainless steels, metals, and how to weld them. All right, we're back to talking about properties of stainless steels again. And uh, in the last stainless steel video, we did mention some things you could do to prevent uh, rusting uh, after the weld on stainless steel. Don't use a carbon steel brush. Don't use a stainless steel brush that's be even been used on carbon steel or might have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Don't get the metal too hot for too long. And we talked about the need for purging, otherwise you get sugaring, or also called granulation on the backside. We didn't talk about nuts and bolts on how to get that done. And uh, so today we're going to uh, give some tips and tricks on uh, uh, how to purge, how to back up the backside of a stainless steel weld. And um, because some, sometimes purging is completely necessary, sometimes, it, 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 sometimes backing it up with copper or other tricks is good enough. And so uh, you don't want to go to great pains to get a perfectly silver backside of the weld if it's not necessary because it costs money, takes more argon, takes more time, eats into your profit or eats into the, your time with your honey or whatever, it eats into something. Anyway, it's just unnecessary sometimes. It's overkill. Uh, usually there's no kill like overkill, I know, but uh, sometimes overkill costs too much money when overworking something is bad. So in fact, you know, last last uh, video I said something uh, on the webpage about uh, sometimes good enough really is good enough. And somebody wrote me wrote me an email and said, you know what? It said sometimes good enough is better, and that is true. Sometimes good enough is better because uh, you can overwork something to death and it actually uh, be worse than it was to start with. And we all we've all done that. So uh, we want to pay attention to quality. At the same time, you got to be real, right? All right. So let's dive into this thing. And I've got an example here: a bunch of little pieces of stainless steel rolled, tacked together, and uh, we want we want to do is use that for an example on uh, on how to purge, how to back up, how to prevent discoloration, and, and whatever else comes on. So let's do it. All right. So what we've got here is uh, five pieces of 16 gauge rolled 304 stainless steel, and the fifth one must have been shorter or something because in order to fit up, it's got about a quarter inch gap in it. So what do we do with that? You know, ideally we could take the ends of this thing and purge the whole thing out. And get a purge on the back side but that gap's going to give us fits no matter what so how do you deal with a gap like that well uh, using some kind of backup material copper is the preferred thing but aluminum is the next best thing and i've got this big piece of uh, heavy wall aluminum tubing here that i kind of set machines on from time to time and it's, it'll do the trick so i just got it slid up in there and it, it'll uh it'll it'll provide backing it'll trap a little argon a gap that big on uh 16 gauge stainless steel. It's not going to look good if you try to weld it without some backing. Even if it's backed up with argon gas, it's going to be tough to fill that up because it's just going to overheat. Now you could use something like this, a little, you know, where I come from, we call these backup boxes. Uh, they're also called purge boxes. It's just a piece of perforated copper uh, welded on a, on a little stainless steel box with a piece of tube run up in there and some diffuser material like copper wool stuffed up inside of it. But this thing's flat, and the inside of the tube, the stuff here has got a contour on it, so I could stop and make another one. That would take several hours. That's usually not, not going to work. Uh, another option, I could get a piece of copper tubing like this here. I'm going to use this later on. And uh, with or without argon holes in it, if I, I could, could just use it for backing, clamp it up in there, that would help. That would trap argon. That would... Uh, Give the metal a place to uh, to rest against. Uh, I've got this. Found this old MIG nozzle for a machine I don't have anymore. I could use it. I could clamp it up in there. It's about the right uh, radius. I could clamp it and use it for backing. But I don't want to mess up the MIG nozzle. And I've got the piece of aluminum tubing, and it's not uh, not going to be good for much else. So that's what I'm going to use there. I'm going to use this uh, pony clamp here with some extensions welded on it. That's a handy tool for clamping back up to, to things. And I've got two prongs on it on the side that I weld from. That lets me get the torch in there. I can bend them back and forth, narrow, bend them to put them right, right together or pull them apart, and that gives me a place to get the torch in. That's going to hold my piece of aluminum tubing up in there right where I need it to, to make this weld. It's handy. I, I can also puddle stainless steel on the end so I don't contaminate the stainless with it, but all right, it, it, it's going to work. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna attack this uh, attack the corner here first, and um, that metal's just gonna wet right against that aluminum. It won't melt the aluminum because the aluminum is so thick and takes so much more heat. So it's just gonna rest against there and trap argon, and uh, just kind of give me a trough to uh, so that that the metal, weld metal won't sink through like big grapes or anything like that. All right, we'll do a close-up here now. That's the close, the same thing. Got it tacked up. And uh, basically, I'm only using about a 16th inch, 16th diameter filler rod here. It's balling up on me, so I'm going to ram it in there and get it to, there we go. And then I'm just going to leave it in the puddle. I should, I should be using at least a 332nd or an 8th inch and just walking over that thing, but I didn't have one. So I'm just pushing a little bit of this in there, leaving it in the puddle. Kind of weaving back and forth, tying those sidewalls in, and uh, that big piece of aluminum is really, really helping draw the heat out. And I'm not, I don't have to worry about it sinking through and, and, and dropping down, sinking through too much. So it's very easy to just to tie everything in using that kind of as a mold, a casting mold on the back side almost. And when we're done with the weld here, I'll show you the back side of it so you can see what it looks like. Ideally, it would fit up just a little tighter, but this is going to be okay. Now, I did mention something about something being good enough. This is not as good as a perfect argon purge. It's not going to be silver on the back side, but in a lot of cases, you don't need that silver. This is just uh, some automotive part uh, uh, or a boat part or whatever. You know, as long as it's not sugared on the back side, you'll maintain. The corrosion resistance will maintain a good quality weld. It won't, you won't have a built-in defect in a place to, to just trap tons of bacteria like you would have if it's if it's sugared up. I'm taking this thing in short runs because it, it heats up pretty quick. But that big piece of aluminum tubing is drawing the heat out. So even if I let it cool for 15 or 20 seconds, I can get right back in there. Just about done. Won't be long now. All right, when I get to the end here, I want to go ahead and I got I have several pieces mating up here, so I got to go ahead and, and tie everything together, or, or it'll blow a hole out. So I'll get some rod in there, get it all kind of fused together, and that's that. Taper off nice and slow, so I don't leave a crater hole. Now, obviously, with a quarter inch gap, this is not going to be a gorgeous weld or anything to write home about, but for a quarter inch gap. It didn't do it didn't do too poorly. See where it sooted up that aluminum, welding right against it like that, but didn't didn't uh, didn't melt anything. It's still kind of warm, because that draws the heat out. And so the backside looks like this. Not not beautiful, but not sugared. So now we're going to try to use that piece of copper tubing for that long seam for all those seams that are lined up. And uh, it's just crimped on the end. You could weld it, you could solder it, but it's just easy just to hammer it shut on the on one end and uh, line it up, make a trough out of aluminum foil, several several layers, folded aluminum foil, dashed up in there to make a nice little trough. And then we're going to use that same little pony clamp with the uh, pieces of rod welded on it to hold it in place with the split tongs on it. Let us get in there and we'll hook up an argon hose to the uh, to the other end of the uh, copper tubing, and it will zip it up. There's all kinds of ways of getting backup gas, getting shielding, getting some kind of shielding in stainless steel. And like I said, uh, there are there are cases where you need a real really really good purge because you need it silver on the backside. But there's a big difference between. Uh, sugared and not sugared. If you can just get some argon or some chill or some backing copper or aluminum on the backside mashed up flat, it is, it's a whole lot better than nothing. It's not nearly as good as a good argon purge, but it is much better than nothing. Now you're going to have to have a dual flow meter for, for uh, hooking up external argon gas like this. I've got a twin flow meter uh, Victor gauge I've had for years. This survived a house fire and it's been dropped a time or two and it's still still going good. But you uh, you need uh, if you're going to be purging 
uh, using purge gas. There's no way of really splitting the gas from your torch effectively, so you have to have a separate flow meter. You run off the same bottle of gas, but you have to have a separate flow meter. So those are two ways I showed you, backing solid backing material, and then fabricating something quick and down and dirty to get some argon gas to the backside of what you're welding. Now we'll weld the rest of these uh, joints on the next video. This one's turned uh, too long on us, and uh, some other tips and tricks too, but thanks for watching WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.